Hi, I'm Maurice Westhuizen. Uh, it's my privilege today to speak to the fellow of the Centre for Leadership and Dialogue at Gibbs, Mr. Rolf Meyer. Rolf, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you very much. Rolf, you've been involved with Gibbs uh, specifically around the dialogue work for a number of years. What is it that draws an individual like yourself to get involved in this kind of work? I guess my own involvement in the subject of dialogue for many years while we were busy with the dialogue about South Africa and the future of the country, particularly that uh, dialogue that led to the negotiations and the settlement of South Africa, brought me closer to the subject, you know, and um, I guess today I'm one of the biggest proponents of the subject of dialogue, particularly to resolve conflict. I mean, that is the message that South Africa has for the rest of the world where there's conflict. And so I stay in that space, I, I remain involved <coughs> at, uh, at trying to resolve conflict through dialogue and um, I'm traveling abroad quite often specifically to share that message from South Africa and the experience that we've had in South Africa with other countries that are still st struggling to find their own way forward. Wolf, you obviously have deep experience in dealing with conflict through the negotiation process that you were a key player in at the time of the transition in South Africa. Today you work with nations in transition, also trying to resolve conflict to, through dialogue. In South Africa at the moment, we're seeing a lot of protest, we're seeing the emergence of new political parties, disgruntlement, widespread, not just with, with politics, but also in business, even in civil society, a general sense of uncertainty, as you've referred to. Uh, when we see this kind of activity in a society where people are not engaging uh, amicably, but are beginning to become, you know, protesting and, and voicing their frustrations in this way. What is broken in the national discourse, and how do we address that? Maybe we should go back a little bit uh, to what we have learned from our own experience um, 20 years ago, when we were negotiating about the future. And and I keep on thinking there were three things, you know. I go to bed with those three things in my mind and I <laughs> often wake with those three things in my mind simply because of the, of the integral nature that it has, all three of it together, uh, as to where any one of us find ourselves at a particular point of time and how it informs decision making, how it informs management decisions, uh, etc. And those three being uh, the inclusive nature that we have followed towards our approach in the negotiations and in the dialogue. The ownership that we have taken of the problems that we had to overcome and the collective responsibility that, that came out of the ownership. Uh, we didn't leave it for others to resolve it, we took it on ourselves to resolve it. And then thirdly, the level of trust that we succeeded in, in building between us as opponents at the time in finding answers. And you know, I keep on reminding myself that these things worked well for us then and maybe we should apply more of those, <laughs> of those critical aspects in the everyday business of the country today. Uh, you know, when I listen to the outcry for strikes, for instance, on the side of, of the unions, and they might have a legitimate case, then my answer to that would be, let's get to talk to each other. Let's follow an inclusive approach. Let's take joint ownership of this problem and find the answers. Because whatever the outcome is will either destroy us <laughs> or will take us forward. And South Africa needs us to be very progressive in taking us forward. Progressive in the sense of economic growth, but sharing that growth as well. And, and I think there's too little debate about that at the moment. The question that we have to ask ourselves is the economic model that we are finding um, our, our plans on, is it the correct one? Are there not better ones to look at? And, and I think this can only be achieved through, through dialogue and a more inclusive approach. To the future of South Africa as a nation, uh, you've seen a lot, you saw South Africa at its worst, you saw the miracle that is the new South Africa emerge, and you speak of uh, the positive expectation you have of the future of South Africa. We have a generation of youth that are growing up that maybe haven't had that experience, haven't seen where we've come from, and don't necessarily have a clear picture of where we can go as a country. What is your hope for that generation? What do you see for South Africa over the next few years? Um, <clears throat> the reason why I am hopeful about the future, optimistic about the future, 
is exactly what we're talking about, and that's the youth, the future gen generation, the generation that is al already now in the making. We must remember that people who were born in 1994 and thereafter <laughs> are now entering their career stage or starting to enter it. They might be students still in some cases, but many of them are already starting to enter their career stage. They don't live under the paradigm of the past any longer. They have, in fact, very little knowledge of that paradigm of the past. The paradigm of the past was one of superiority versus inferiority. The paradigm that this generation lives under and were, was brought up under is one of equality, of we as South Africans are individuals that are all equal. That is the guarantee that we have in our constitution. So it's a new frame of mind. Uh, and, and, and my message to, to this generation would be don't bother yourself about the history. <laughs> Look at the future. Look at what you want from the future and work towards that. And, and to use unionist terms, bargain for that collectively with your compatriots, your age group, your generation. You know, I'm a regular on the Gout train. <laughs> And I do it partly because it's for me a fascinating experience. To sit on the train during peak hours is just fascinating. Or let me say, rather stand on the train because it's so packed. And just observe, look at the faces, see the people there. It's new generation people. It's people that have one thing in common, and that is to get to their destination. And it's almost that mindset that I want to, to, <laughs> to include in my hopeful message for the future, and that is, look at the destination we're going to. Rule von Het, excellent note. Thank you for your time. Thank you.